Welcome to the Zone Informer Podcast. I am your host, Alfred Tabex, joined by one of the coolest guys in video game music today, Rosen. Hey everyone, it's Rosen here. Yeah, so uh, sadly Nate can't be here. His router was fried and his internet's kind of down, so uh, he, he can't be here today. But we have a great substitute. We have Rosen with us, so <laughs> that's always lovely to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about, this isn't Zelda related at all, but since I have you on here, I want to talk about your uh, newest album, the Skyrim album, the Kaizal Journey to yes. Skyrim. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, Kaizal. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a, a Thum like expert, but yeah, I'm sure that's how you say it. <laughs> so first off, I'm just going to ask, what inspired you to do a Skyrim album? Well, um, last November when when the Skyrim uh, special edition came out, I immediately bought it and I was like, I'm going to play another 300 hours of this game. <laughs> and as I played it uh, with my wife, we were both like, oh my goodness, we should cover all these songs. And also, uh, well, that was one reason. The other one is like at work, um, I usually like stream music from Spotify and I noticed like Skyrim soundtrack is nowhere to be found on like streaming um, digital services like Spotify or uh, Apple Music. So I'm like, hmm, <laughs> we should do something about that. Um, so, and also the other inspiration was working with Theophany on Time Send uh, Part 2. Um, we got a lot of recording sessions here at my studio um, for the choir and every, we in our spare time, we kept doing all these like little snippets of Skyrim and like joking about it, like, oh, let's sing the song and blah, blah, blah. And like, I guess like we said it too many times or we we had so much fun with it that we were just like, oh, let's just turn it and turn it into an album. So this happened at the same time or this was produced at the same time as I was finishing Time Send with Jason uh, Theophany. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so how far back does your love for music go? Like, have you always done music or is this just like a last 10 years type of thing no um ever since i was six years old um i i, I guess i've loved music before that but um i started playing piano when i was six and i have never really stopped doing anything music related um i went to to college for music in boston um i have a degree in film scoring okay. um so yeah this is my life pretty much <laughs> So did you work with Theophany on uh, the score for the Terrible Fate film? Well, he did most of that. I just helped him. Uh, I helped him record. There's some like creepy choir parts in there singing like the Majora's theme. I don't know if you remember. Mm -hmm. um, they're yeah. pretty creepy. So yeah, we just like hired the singers and uh, I pretty much like helped him record them here at the studio. I, I helped more with uh, the production of the album. I, I, I worked with him on the boss track, uh, the Adolwa track, mm -hmm. and I recorded the rest of the choirs for him as well as like arranged some lyrics. Um, my wife, me and my wife, um, we wrote the the like s lyrics in Sanskrit and other languages <laughs> we use for the album. So okay. it was pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just kind of a curious question. So how are you like one of the lead figures in the Materia Collective or is that just something you work with someone you work with? Um, no, so Material Collect Collective, um, when it started, it was uh, more of a <laughs> collective. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I remember I was invited to collaborate on this album with other like 100 musicians. Um, it was for Final Fantasy VII. Mm -hmm. um, and it was called Materia. I think that's where it, the name actually comes from. Um, so after that, I just started collaborating on other albums. I'm also on like the Final Fantasy VIII one, and and I've helped uh, you know advise some other artists for the other following albums. My wife is also on it. I'm very good friends with the founder uh, Sebastian Wolf, and um, we've always wanted to do like you know bigger albums together and stuff like that. So. I guess that's how I ended up um, being signed by now his label called Materia Collective. Um, and that's why like this album, k is released through it. So for this one, how much this is just kind of, I'm always curious about this specific thing when it comes to video game remixing, mm -hmm. especially with a lot of the tracks like on Harmony of Heroes and whatnot. How much of the album is like live recorded instrumentation? How much of it is uh, compu done on computer? It's probably 90% digital, um, virtual instruments. Um, most of the vocals are live and um, 
what else is life? And the pianos are life as well. I always try to keep it, you know, life because that's my main instrument. Um, what else is life? I have some violin um, playing in there. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, and we recorded um, some percussion in this like big ass cathedral in in San Diego um, to get like the you know super echoey thing. If you listen to um, track number twelve, Dragonborn, you know like the main theme, um, mm -hmm. the beginning of that that was a cool experiment because we actually uh, and by we I mean like Theophany and I like recorded this super big ass like bass drum. And uh, we sampled it and we pretty much made a library and like, you know, then here, you know, we just like mess up with it and stuff. So that's why I say 90%, like we like sampling a lot of instruments ourselves and creating our own libraries. But, you know, in the end, I guess you can call it in <laughs> digital. <laughs> so how does that sampling process work then? Like what, what do you do to get those samples to play around with um, in digital? Well, it depends on what kind of instrument, but I guess uh, percussion is very simple because, uh, you know, you just have the percussion. You can either pick, like, record it here at the studio where there's no uh, reverb, no echo, um, or record it at a desired space like this one. We just love the, you know, the, the reverb from that cathedral. We bring, like, instruments and uh, we pretty much record, you know, different velocities, meaning, like, different uh, uh, amounts of intensity, you know, just, like, very, like, piano hits or very forte um, impacts and... Uh, yeah, this takes a while, and after that, we just like code it into contact and you know, make patches and program them a little bit so they're not just like uh, all weird when you play them and on the keyboard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> so, do you have any other projects lined up that you can talk about, or do you want to keep those a surprise? I mean, um, let's see. I guess the one thing I, I can talk about is uh, I promised my fans, I think it's been a year now, <laughs> uh, my last uh, Zelda album was Time Once Lost, a Majora's Mask um, album that I released yeah. a year ago, actually. the I don't know if you heard it, but um, the last track, no, the second to the last track, uh, I think it's like Song of Healing. And with a little teaser at the very end, there's like a secret section that has uh, like you can hear boats and stuff like that and someone playing like accordion and you can hear like Wind Waker's theme. So people have been uh, waiting for me to release a Wind Waker album. And um, so I guess that's no secret. That's what I'm working on right now. I'm getting um, obviously I'm getting Theophany on board with this because uh, it's, it's so funny because he wants to arrange all the music I don't want to arrange <laughs> and vice versa so it's like perfect because we're not getting in each other's way and also we're helping each other collaborating like he is amazing at percussion like I really admire the way he like handles percussion um, and sound design overall and I'm more of a melodic person orchestration you know like just finding different ways of making stuff sound different um, and my wife, Revan, she is in pretty much all my songs. Uh, she's an amazing <laughs> vocalist, and um, she also plays other instruments like harp and trumpet. But um, so the three of us are trying to, you know, get together and make a Wind Waker album, or I guess EP. It's not going to be like a full length album. Uh, mm -hmm. We want to try making smaller stuff from now on so people don't have to wait around for four years for, you know, new albums. <laughs> So do you have any ideas of what tracks are going to be on that album or uh, just any of your favorites? Yeah, I, I guess I can tell you which ones uh, my favorites will be. Uh, we're doing uh, the very first track, which is the opening to the game. Uh, mm -hmm. Remind me, what's it called? Like Hero, Hero of Legend? Uh, oh, like the opening yeah, the sequence? Da -da -dum, da -da -dum, bum, bum. Legendary Yes, Hero. thank you. Yeah. That one we're doing. Uh, we're for sure doing uh, Dragon Roost Island. We are doing... Um, uh, the Great Sea, that's my favorite track in the whole, like, soundtrack, so I need to do that. And, like, Theophany is just like, yeah, whatever, you know, that's, like, <laughs> I want to do cooler <laughs> stuff, like Dragon Rose Island or, you know. And yeah. then um, I guess we're all collaborating on the Ganondorf battle, like, the very last. The dum, bum, 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I think those will be there. If we add more, we'll see. Uh, but those will be like the main must uh, arrange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to arrange these guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
got me excited thanks i'm looking forward to that now. <laughs> thanks uh hopefully we'll do a, a good job we'll see <laughs> yeah i mean you always do a good job i always enjoy your <laughs> Thank stuff you. yeah i guess this is like it's very new to all of us because it's some it's like i guess you could call it like a happier style you know you know <laughs> what i mean like yeah uh theophany stuff is always like super dark and intense and like um you know more epic i do more like melodic but it's still like epic and like very dramatic so this will be a very very different album for sure mm -hmm. very fun <laughs> okay so moving on then um have you heard about the zelda the legend of zelda encyclopedia that's coming out uh, yes i heard something about that but um okay yeah that's very exciting <laughs> So we're going to talk about that a okay, little bit yeah. then. Um, according to what we wrote on our uh, on Zelda Informer, mm -hmm. it says the first chapter is going to feature a visual journey that explains some of the very basic features in this series like Hyrule Kingdom and the Master Sword. While another chapter contains a massive list of all enemies, characters, and items to appear in the series. And then another chapter tackles the story in each game, which could add additional details not seen in the games themselves. Yeah. So this is the second one that we're getting this year. The last one we got was... Um, the art book, um, which I don't know if Correct. it's come to the United States yet. I don't think it has. Um, I mean, Otherwise, I think I would have it. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I'm pretty excited about this because it's, you know, it's Zelda and it's, it's a book yeah. on Zelda stuff. Um, what kind of stuff are you looking forward to seeing? Actually, um, I'm very, very excited about looking at more, more stuff about the Master Sword. I think that's my favorite thing about the Zelda series is just like such a legendary sword and and you know with skyward sword we learned so many things from that you know like how it has its own character mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i'm looking forward to learn more about those secrets or like origins you know um what about you <laughs> um i'm kind of on the same page like I, i'm really looking forward to especially mm -hmm. the story part to hear more story details um that we typically hopefully that we typically don't get in the games um because we kind of got some sort of backstory to the Legend of Zelda itself in, in the, Hyrule. the uh, Hyrule Historia with yes. that manga in the back. Um, and so I'm kind of looking forward to more stuff like that that fleshes out the story of Legend of Zelda in each individual game. Um, <clears throat> because the mangas themselves that come out aren't really canon. I know. They're just kind Although of based so off cool, of the I games. Wish they were. <laughs> yeah. They are pretty good. And then you get stuff like at the end of Ocarina of Time, like that bonus chapter. And just, you know, it's a little cool stuff that I really wish was explored Same. more. Um, and maybe we'll see a bunch of that stuff in the book. Maybe we'll see a bunch of that stuff in Breath of the Wild that, like, things that we didn't think would be explored mm -hmm. are explored. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this. This is pretty much some of the only Zelda news we've gotten so far um, <laughs> in know. this past week or so. They're making us dry. suffer. Yeah, I'm very yeah, excited, I too. I mean, the I, one of the things I like the most about Zelda is the story. So I hope that they just flesh out more stuff about the, you know, the timelines and stuff like that. Or just give us more background on some characters that we haven't heard about, you know. The Sheikah yeah. tribe is one of the most mysterious things from the the series. So I think that'll be pretty exciting to explore. And maybe they'll explain, too, that third timeline split that we got in Hyrule Historia where Link yeah. supposedly dies. Um, it'd be nice to figure out where that came from and how that works. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, have you played Super Mario Run? Yeah, I have. I was just playing that before, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> we started talking. Um, yeah, I mean, I play it at work. I mean, I, I know I shouldn't. Do <laughs> <laughs> um, you buy it, actually? Or Yeah, you... um, I, I knew I was going to buy it, like, the moment that I downloaded it, just mm -hmm. because... Uh, it's it's Mario on my phone. Yeah, that's um, how I feel. And so I, I kind of want to talk about our first impressions for that game because apparently it's not doing so well. A lot of people are giving bad reviews. Oh, um, this is cool. We get and... to talk about this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, um, first of all, I was very impressed with the design. Uh, they did a great job at not making it look like a, like a phone app, if you know what I mean. Like mm -hmm. very glossy, like big text and stuff like that. It still looked like a Nintendo game. And I really liked that. It was very fleshed out. Um, the mechanics I actually loved. At first, I was very skeptical because I was like, oh, another like run game. And as much as I <laughs> love them, you know, <laughs> this was very unique. Um, yeah. It was way, way easier to use than I thought it was going to be because I was worried about that, you know, like what's going to happen? Like, are you going to die like that easily or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that? But um, I really liked it. And the same as you, I actually 
bought it right away. Like, I will always support Nintendo. It doesn't matter what they throw at me. I'm just going to throw my money back at them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I, don't, I don't necessarily... I mean, I think the, mo- the bulk of those reviews are coming from people that are having trouble starting the game up. I haven't had it crash on me, so I don't know really what they're Same. talking about. Which is weird, because typically when, like, Pokemon Go or something came out, then it would crash on oh, me. Oh, yes. This is fine. That's so buggy. Um, <laughs> but, like, Super Mario Runs, it's good. It's a, it's a cool little iPhone game. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of replayability to it, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I agree with you. Because you, you go through the, the tour, the world tour, mm-hmm. and then you have to go back and collect all the coins. Then you have to go back, um, collect the, the, the second set, then the third set. Um, then you have the toad rally thing where you can just run oh, up against each fun. other like in a ghost mode. Yeah. <laughs> I get frustrated with that a lot because I lose a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I know what you mean. But I think people, yeah, they're not seeing that. They're not seeing past the fact that it's like $10. And I'm like, well, if you compare it to other Mario games that are like 40 or $50 back in the day, I mean, this is really nothing. And it's like the same experience. And yeah, mm-hmm. people might say like, oh, but it's, you, you know, I can beat this in one night. And I'm like, well, not really because... It's actually a very challenging game once you try to collect, like you say, like the separate um, set of colored coins and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, have you have you gotten all of them? <laughs> um, I'm trying to. I got a, I got a majority of the first set. Yeah, same. Um, as I'm trying to get whatever house item or whatever that you get from those ones, mm-hmm. and then I'll move on to the next and the next. Um, I'm trying to collect enough toads right now to get Luigi. Oh yeah. The only ones I don't have are Luigi and Toadette. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I have Toadette, but not Luigi. Um, that's pretty cool. I was not expecting, like, other characters, to be honest. I actually mm-hmm. thought it was going to be, like, a cheaper-looking game, and I, I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> but I'm uh, I'm impressed, I guess, because I had those low expectations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like the new Super Mario Bros. Wii ported to a phone, which is nice. Yeah. Um, it looks good. It doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look blocky or pixelated, which is really cool. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so the visuals are nice. It has some of the same music that the other games have. So mm-hmm. it's not necessarily like something new, but it's it's familiar, and that's good. Exactly. Um, because we can look at it and be like, oh, yeah, this is Mario, even though we may not play directly like Mario. Right, right. <laughs> um, and a lot of people are saying it didn't bring anything new. I mean, it, it kind of did. The like, mechanics it's, are new. Yeah. You can you can do tricks and rolls mm-hmm. and jumps and jump over enemies, vault over them. Like, there's a lot that's new to this. I don't really know what people are expecting from a mobile Mario game. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, if you download it or if you bought at any point Sonic CD on the phone, um, (laughs) you have the overlay, which is those, the the D-pad and the A and the B button Mm -hmm. um, on that very small phone. Oh, I know. And so you're trying to control it like that. So it's it's more of a hindrance to do it that way. Yeah, it's not ergonomic um, enough. Yeah, then to just have something like this. And I think this is a great use of the iPhone in Mm -hmm. terms of playability for the game. Um, Yeah, like I love uh, how simple the design is, but you can you can play with one hand. I mean, and mm -hmm. one finger, you know, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, it sounds super simple, but it's actually very hard to implement into a good game. Yeah. Um, also, I think I, I don't I don't get why people say like ten dollars is too expensive when the, some of those people like have uh, have been playing like free to play games and they probably spend like a thousand dollars in a year you know, just <laughs> <laughs> buying meaningless you know upgrades. <laughs> yeah, I don't and know. I mean I'd rather pay once I'd rather pay ten bucks once than have to pay like yeah. ten bucks over the period of time and that's something Nintendo's good at so far mm-hmm. with their mobile games um, or if you, if you even want to consider. Um, the Pokemon, uh, not Troze, uh, Picross, yeah. as, for example, um, with the first foray into free-to-play games, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, if you spent like $30 total, then you got the game for free. Like the rest of the game was just open to you. Yeah. Um, so they have typically good that. consumer-friendly models of games mm-hmm. um, to where it's like, okay, you pay this one-time amount or you could pay x over time until you reach the maximum and then you get the game for free or like the rest of the game like unlocked yeah you don't have to worry about any more um micro payments yeah i think um, that's, a, that's a that's a better model in my opinion because even i've all my friends have spent so much money in pokemon go you know <laughs> it's yeah it's ridiculous but oh well hopefully people will actually give it a chance for what it is you know just see that it's a brilliant design and you know because simple is hard to do you know Mm-hmm. So along with that, though, um, we learned just recently on this, uh, probably 
today or yesterday that a lot of the investors were disappointed by early reviews and sales of Super Mario Run. Um, and the shock, the shock, the stock shares uh, finished down at 7.1% in the Tokyo Stock Exchange, and which extended a losing streak to five days during which the stock has fallen more than 16%. Um, so, and the stock had already risen more than 20% in the space of a month before the beginning. Uh, so it's it's dropped about 16% of that 20% of it rising. <laughs> and so that's not necessarily that good for Nintendo. And a lot of, this is also from the Wall Street Journal, in case you guys want to look it up. Yeah, and I mean, as a stockholder myself, um, I've always... Uh, I've always invested in Nintendo. I think like for seven years, I've been like a stockholder in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I try not to rush and like, you know, just sell all my stocks when like, for example, like when Pokemon um, came out. But um, the, the thing is, as an investor, when you see headlines are just saying like, oh, people are not happy with this because it costs and blah, blah, blah. I feel like it's very, um, it's one sided, you know, like all media. Um, and I think the reviews on the App Store didn't help because visually it looks like a horrible game because, you know, of all those, like, one-star reviews. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a lot of, like, very angry people who are not really uh, grading the game um, professionally. I don't know how to say it. And because I've read a lot of uh, reviews out there um, and saying that it's actually an awesome game, and yes, it is worth the ten dollars. It's just like all this mm -hmm. like, like angry users that are just like, oh no, no, this you know this is crap, whatever. So, as an investor, like you see all this, you only see all these things. You know, I I, I bet that ninety percent of these people haven't even seen the game or haven't bought it or whatever. So they're just scared and they're like, I'm gonna you know bring my stocks out of this market, you know, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Although it's kind of weird though, because after what happened with Pokemon and a lot of people just like <laughs> throwing their money at the at <laughs> Wall Street, uh, I thought it was gonna happen again, but I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Well, it seems one of the reasons uh, that people seem to not like it too much is not the fact that the ten dollar prices on it, period, but the fact that they make you pay ten dollars after already having the game mm. for a little bit. So. Yeah. Um, somebody said, I think it was uh, Matoy Akimoto, a former Nintendo game director, stated that they should have either asked players to pay when downloading or give more free content if they were to pursue a free-to-download model. Um, so basically either... And this was, kind of confused me at the beginning, too, because I remember them saying that it was going to be a $10 game. Yeah. Um, on the App Store, it says Git, so it's a free it's a download. Free download. Um, but then after you play the first world, you hit a, a paywall. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. And that's kind of discouraging to a lot of people, yeah. Because they see that and they're like, oh, "I don't want to pay, you know, ten dollars." And you could still technically play the game without that, but you miss out on a lot of the content. Correct. So you miss out on like the blue, green, yellow, purple toads. So you can't really expand the game or, or get any more characters um, or move through the world. Correct. Um, so that that might be a deterrent to a lot of people. Um, maybe Nintendo will change that. Maybe they won't. I think that the ten dollar price point is is fine the way it is. I don't think that they should change I that. Um, and again, the uh, Wall Street Journal also stated that the game isn't available on the Android operating system yet. So we might see more downloads, more payments through that. Um, I think it's a little premature to jump the gun and say, "Oh, well, it's it's obviously poorly like doing poor, so we shouldn't even try to um, do anything about it." It's been out for like two three days yeah, now <laughs> um and pokemon go everybody forgets they, they treat it like it's some like oh it's it's pokemon go now we, we play it like every time we go out or every so often but the the launch for that game was abysmal oh yeah you couldn't connect you the servers were always down yes. um anytime you used an incense or a lucky egg or bought anything it would pretty much go away because you couldn't get back into the game so for the first week and a half of that game it was unplayable i think even past that there were plenty of glitches plenty of bugs the tracking system went down so there was no reason for that like for people to like that game um because it was broken and it still kind of is it's still not it's still really kinda, a full game. yeah and like people are still ang angry about that like pokemon searching uh mechanic and stuff like that you know they haven't mm -hmm. fixed it or or they took it out right like the feature um, they kind of added something different yeah but it's not people quite still don't like it and there. probably yeah. won't like it until they get back like <laughs> what was there before um 
Yeah, I feel like um, a lot of this is just based on like, an like a fast reaction, you know, without actually mm -hmm. thinking about it. Like most of internet reactions, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's. I think it's. Uh, it's weird too because this is kind of the flip flop of what happened with Pokemon Go. Mm -hmm. Is the investors saw Pokemon Go as a huge success for Nintendo, and so they poured their money into that into Nintendo stock for like a week straight only to find out after that week that Nintendo only had like half a investing interest in Pokemon Go to begin with and then they pulled out. Yeah. Um, whereas the Mario game, Super Mario Run, they have a full invested interest in. Um, like they, every, all the in uh, revenue and influx of revenue is going to go to Nintendo. Um, and so it's, it's more along the lines of if they fix whatever crashing glitch is appearing for some people... Um, then I'm sure the game's going to do perfectly well. I think, again, it's like you said, it's it's really uh, dumb to just, you know, have a premature reaction to something like this and pull out. Um, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's going to happen because people get scared when their money's in, uh, True. in danger of being lost, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, stock market changes all the time. It goes up and down. Um, so I really wouldn't worry about it too much. Like right now... This may seem like a big deal for Nintendo, but they always tend to bounce back. And who knows, Correct, in January, yeah. with January 12th, um, with the Switch reveal, mm -hmm. it's it might go right back up. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, so, you know, stocks are stocks. Are stocks They're and, so and weird, we'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even tell me about that. <laughs> Don't get me started on this stock. <laughs> um, yeah. So, we're getting more and more reports, too, now, that the Switch... I mean, this is something that we heard a long time ago, but it was more like... Morally, more of just a rumor um, that we were going to get the Switch and it was going to be less powerful than the PS4 and kind of on par with the Xbox. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about that, like being less powerful than the PS4? Is that a problem or is that just a non-existent issue? You know, at first, when I heard it the first time, I was like, oh, no, this is horrible. Why are they doing the <laughs> same mistake again? Um, but when you think about it, yeah, I think it might be less powerful. I mean, well it is going to be less powerful but i don't think this is a problem because this is first of all it's a hybrid console so you cannot have the full potential of a home console is just sitting there with all those fans and all those processors and stuff like that and at the same time have the same powerhouse just like you know while you're mm -hmm. driving or going to work not driving don't don't do that um <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing is um that Games are going to be running at 720p when it's portable, when it's, like, undocked. So that makes me wonder, you know, like, yes, it's less powerful, but I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. Also, because the architecture, like, these processors and, like, the graphics card, like, have um, are way more advanced than whatever the Wii you had anyway. So <laughs> um, I feel like it's genius that, if you know, if they can manage to just be able to use the full potential of both the processor and the and the and the gpu you know i think it's going to be a magical console that you can just carry everywhere with you mm -hmm. what do you think i think i i kind of agree like i don't think necessarily it's a problem like i've always i'm always a little sketched out whenever nintendo decides that they want to go at a lower yeah um processing power or speed or whatever than the, than the ps4 but also we've heard from uh other companies like third-party companies like EA or Ubisoft talking about how easy it is or how easy it's going to be to port games from the PS4 and the Xbox True. One over to the, the Switch. Um, so even if it's kind of a downgrade of power, I don't think it's going to be that much that it's going to be significant. Yep. Um, it's not going to be like when they had to port things from the PS3 and the Xbox 360 to the Wii. I don't think it's going to be that drastic where you oh, see no, yeah, a no noticeable way. shift. I, 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 uh, I feel like if it was that way, uh, third parties would just not you know <laughs> make games for, yeah. for the switch and i think a lot of them are just jumping you know going for it yeah that's a good sign to and me. i think yeah and a lot of the like i guess my clearest example of of the comparison between the ps3 and and the um the wii type of thing uh when they downgraded was if you play marvel ultimate alliance 2 on a ps3 and an xbox 360 you get a, a more well-rounded more uh better looking or better looking experience yeah. with uh, more content in the game and better story like dialogue and stuff whereas if you play it on the wii it's the same as the ps2 version um <laughs> and so far and from what we heard about that about porting to the wii it was really really difficult for companies to do i mean even more so for the wii u yeah um so they just kind of didn't like a lot of third-party companies just stopped porting stuff to the wii u 
Um, but so far from what we've heard is that Nintendo is having like great luck with people porting it over to their console. Um, so I don't think we necessarily have anything to worry about in terms of power for the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, at least I hope not. Right now, it's again, it's mostly just rumors. It's not like we're going to get anything significant until January. Yeah. Um, again, you know, we're still still waiting. We got an announcement for an announcement. <laughs> again. So we'll, we'll see there. Patient. Um, <laughs> March is not that yeah. far away. Which is kind I, of annoying. I know it is, of. but yeah. I know it will be worth it. <laughs> you know, again, the fact that a lot of like um, developers are supporting the idea of, of the Nintendo Switch gives me a lot of hope because. You know, from the very beginning, we saw, like, a um, uh, company, like, directors being like, oh, yeah, I want to make games for, like, Switch. It looks like such a cool console. You know, like, I saw the specs, and, you know, I'm very convinced about this. Um, you know, so <laughs> if they can port their, ga- their games, like you said, you know, and they're not having any trouble with that. I don't see why we should be scared of that. Okay, I think that's all we have for news topics. So I'm going to hit on a little fan topics, a few of them that we missed from last week. All right. Um, and then we'll talk about our... Our fun topic of the day. So, Stephen Waters the second says, "Do you think we'll ever see an origin of the Triforce uh, in a game? Uh, something that really expands into why there was a need for it in the first place." What do you think about Ooh. that? Ooh, I want to say I really hope so. I had not thought about that before. Um, I don't see why they want to do it because they already did for the Master Sword, or although that would have to be like a prequel. Mm-hmm. of a prequel so maybe not. <laughs> but they they never said like this is the only prequel we were going to do you know um i can see them doing that i hope so because i mean well actually no <laughs> i don't think they will <laughs> and i can tell you why because most of when when you play a game uh, as all a game uh it goes into all this like mythological like section where they tell you all the legends and legends and fables and i mean they're legends you don't actually see them mm-hmm. happening uh at all so maybe that's the beauty of the legend of Zelda's lore so maybe they don't want to show just about everything you know like when helia was i don't want to say alive because she was a goddess but you, you know what i mean like when <laughs> she was around doing stuff creating the world <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i think it'd be interesting to see um because kind of also what he said like why did they leave the Triforce in the first place? And then yeah. we've talked about this on Zelda for a while back with a bunch of articles talking about the Divine Prank, which is what they talked about oh, in Twilight yeah. Princess. Yeah. Um, so it's it's more along the lines of, like, why is this a thing? Like, why did they leave it here? And I kind of... So it could kind of be looked at, like, um, in Christian mythology, there's the Tree of Good and Evil at the very mm-hmm. beginning of the game, the Knowledge of Good and Evil at the very beginning of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's put there more as a test um as, as the one thing humanity is not supposed to touch not supposed to eat yeah from. correct and so in that um it shows that's how the the fall of man happens how sin enters the world is because of them reaching and grabbing and eating from the tree um and so you could kind of view the triforce like that as in it's not supposed to be something for human use like mm-hmm. there, there's reasons why the goddess has to step in whenever there's mm-hmm. a um a war about it like highly uh, fought against the demon king uh, yeah for possession of the triforce and kind of like you see you see this unfold over and over again like it's used in the wrong way that it has to be used correctly is I, I don't necessarily think it's something that again nintendo's never been clear on story so this is all speculation yeah. but i don't think it was something that was intended for human use it was more of a reminder uh, yeah, that the, of the goddesses and, and them controlling the world and, and creating the world um so it's it's more of a symbol like a like like their power, a symbol mm-hmm. of their power. It's just, it, it's really confusing because again, we really don't know that much about it or why it was there. Yeah. Um, it, it, otherwise, it's just there to like mess up the world that they created, which we've seen time and time and time and time and time again. Yeah, these these goddesses are very careless. Yeah, if you ask me. <laughs> so let's see. Um, so. Some Ryan Seaman asked, I think I might have already asked this um, last week, but I'd like to hear your opinion on this. I have a topic concerning Breath of the Wild. Being that there are over 100 shrines in the game, how many rune abilities do you think it will be possible for Link to acquire? In that, like, um, for example, there's the one where uh, you get the magnetic ability in order to manipulate objects and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically just kind of extra items without mm-hmm. there being items in the game. 
Um, do you think that we're going to get one for every shrine or maybe every 10 shrines or something like that? You know, what I think is going to happen is that there's going to be like some core ones, like the most important ones, like let's say the magnetic thing. And in um, when you do more runes, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to evolve those mm -hmm. uh, abilities okay. writing, rather than just getting like 20 million different uh, ones. I think that's what's going to happen. So you could say like maybe we're going to get like 12, you know, powers like that and they're just going to like branch mm -hmm. out from that. Yeah, kind of like a skill tree for each item or each rune. Yeah. Like oh, now you cool. can do heavier stuff, or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, too, like, it'd be kind of difficult to make a specific um, weapon or a specific rune for each different shrine. Yeah, that would be too much. Yeah. And Maybe that's why like, they're taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, one mechanic per shrine. Mm -hmm. um, but then it, at that point, you'd be wondering why, you know, why you have that one ability. If it's just going to be used for this one shrine, to be kind of seen seen as frivolous yeah i know so like why program this in the game why, why worry about this if it's only used for one thing yeah um so like i agree like it probably is maybe 12 20 and then it just gets upgraded from mm -hmm. there or maybe it doesn't get up maybe there's just like certain trends that you can only reach after you've gotten each route yeah because so that's all about uh, connecting like the different items you have to like pass certain tests you know i mean i know there's always like a main like feature item for a temple but you you always have to use one of the previous ones anyway, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't see them, like, doing, like, a million of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, George J. Nahr asked, the or more, more kind of posed an idea um, about the progression of Zelda games that they have taken in terms of storytelling and gameplay, and where does Nintendo go from here? So, obviously, the, the, the next progression that we're getting is Breath of the Wild, mm -hmm. um, which is been told that we're gonna have a story to it we haven't really seen any like definitive story to the game we know like little hints about it like there's calamity again and obviously something happened that to left hyrule and ruins link's been asleep for a hundred years there's the bird people like all these things um and i guess the last real storytelling game we got from nintendo in terms of uh well really anything um was skyward sword mm -hmm. um because that was not necessarily really heavily focused a story, but it really set the myth mythological aspect Correct. of Zelda. So we got where the Master Sword came from. Um, we saw how, who Hylia was, and that whole goddess. Of, maybe she's a goddess of time, maybe she's not, we don't know. Um, but we did get a lot in that game. And so I think that hopefully moving forward, Nintendo is going to want to add more storytelling into the game, and they're hopefully going to get better at that. Um, because I think we talked about this. I think I talked about this with Nate a while back. Okay. Is that the storytelling in Hyrule Warriors was actually pretty oh, good. Oh, it was. I it wasn't like it. a fantastic story. Mm -hmm. um, but Nintendo at this point can't be like, well, we can't let like a, a third party do something better <laughs> yeah. with our own games than, than we do. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think? Well, yeah, that's so true. Um, <laughs> I think the beauty of, uh, of this new game is that it's an open world. And they have the chance to throw in so much lore in there, you know. Because mm -hmm. it's not going to be forced on you because it's not going to be a linear uh, story or gameplay. So I think that you're just going to learn so much from the lore that we don't know about, you know, both from like this, wherever this is in the timeline and just like overall um, the whole like series. And, you know, you might find a lot in like books or kind of like in Skyrim, how they have like so mm -hmm. much lore, but it's all hidden in books and like people just giving you quests and stuff like that, you know. I, I feel like it's kind of the same. They're, they're trying to compensate for that lack of story, like you say, in, in, in other games. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I have for the fan topics. Um, sorry we didn't put any out a question out today. Um, Nate's internet was down, like I said, so we couldn't exactly get to the Facebook page post mm -hmm. about it. But, um, as always, you can feel free to just drop us questions whenever. We can put them on our YouTube vi our YouTube. Uh, videos that come out each week or you can email them to us or you know facebook or twitter what, whatever yeah. works um so last topic that i want to ask is last night i saw star wars rogue one uh -huh. with my fiance and her nice. family um and I saw, I saw some articles about it afterwards because i was kind of staying away from any spoilers mm -hmm. um and one of the articles was talking about uh it was titled is Star Wars, or like, can Star Wars be Star Wars without the Luke Skywalker family? Or the Skywalker family? Um, so basically, can a core Star Wars film or anything about Star Wars be done 
without actually talking about you know Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, that that whole aspect. Um, who the main like the main story of Star Wars is about them. Yeah. Um, and so that got me thinking: Can there be a Legend of Zelda game, like a, a full fledged Legend of Zelda game? Like this was a Rogue One was a two and a half hour movie that came out <laughs> like as a yearly release for Star Wars. And it was a side story. It was it was a part of the main story, but it was kind of it filled in gaps. Yeah. So, do you think that we could get a game, a Zelda game? Not necessarily could. Will Nintendo make one? Because that's always you know, will Nintendo do this yeah. or this? Um, but would do you think that they could a Zelda game could survive on its own without any of the core characters that we always hear about, like Zelda or um, Link or Ganondorf? That's a tough one, but at the same time, you have games like Majora's Mask, where, you know, you don't really have Zelda or Ganondorf. You know, I mean, I know you mm-hmm. see, like, Zelda in the memory, but honestly, it does, that doesn't count. <laughs> it was, like, super forced, so they could call it, like, Legend of Zelda. But I feel like even without those elements, they could have called it, like, you know, the Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. So, I mean, I would say yes. They could do, like, a spin-off to try to compensate for... You know, like, just try to fill in um, plot holes in there, you know, like, about Mm -hmm. sages. That would be pretty cool, like... um, And also, I think they could potentially make games about the Sheik and Drive. Uh, How do you say Sheik? Yeah, yeah, thank you. (laughs) I've always wondered, thank (laughs) you. Um, You know, because that is, like, super mysterious and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure, like, they don't have to include either, like, Zelda, Link, or, um, or Ganondorf. Um, and I think it would survive on its own, to be honest with you. Of course, it wouldn't be, like, a Zelda game, you know, in terms of, like, mm-hmm. mechanics and, you know, gameplay and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah. And that also might come... It might become more likely the more Nintendo focuses on story... Mm-hmm. Um, because right now there's not necessarily a need. I mean, there's a need. Like we we all there's certain areas that we'd like to see fill in, or certain characters we like to see explored. Um, but Nintendo may not see a need right now for a storytelling game that fills in some story yeah. if they're not too focused on it. Um, and they've already said in the past multiple times that they focus more on gameplay than on story. Yeah, that's true. Um, as, as sad as that makes me, because story <laughs> is a big part of gaming for me. Um, <laughs> yeah, but there's. Uh, there's, I think there's room for a side story. Uh, like we've, like the hope is that there will be a Sheik game that explains what happened with Zelda, in like the seven years between. That'd be great. Uh, Link going into the Temple yeah. of Time and coming in, kind of in a style of like Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. or Thief or something, where it's a stealth-based game. Um, I think that Nintendo, that a Zelda game could survive without its core characters, um, but there'd have to be a reason for it to to be made, not necessarily just to have a side story. Yeah. Um, like I can't really spoil too much about Rogue One, or I won't. I won't be that guy. Um, but <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of people who for, haven't seen it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for all the complaints that there are with that movie, and some of the complaints that I have with the movie, um, it does fill in some plot mm-hmm. holes from the original trilogy, yeah. um, and explains how a lot of things happened, um, and you know, why certain things got to where they were. Um, <clears throat> and also does some good job at establishing some more lore to the, to the Star mm-hmm. Wars universe, um, but also uh, the the now canon TV show uh, Star mm-hmm. Wars Rebels is pretty much a show with Skywalkers. any yeah. Skywalkers, and it's remarkable. It's it's it great. Is. Yeah, um, it's it's so good, and it's doing so well. So I think there's room for a Zelda game without. Zelda in it, there just there has to be a reason for yep. it. Um, it has to have a purpose other than hey, look, it's a spinoff <laughs> title, um, because those typically don't do that well. I'm looking at Shadow of the Hedgehog, right <laughs> I there. <know>. Um, <laughs> not everything works. <laughs> it's like, yeah, not not every idea you throw at the wall is gonna stick. Yeah. Um, but I, I I think it'd be cool to see a side story game um, without any of the core characters in it. But there again, there'd have to be a reason. Yeah. Like we'd have to there'd have to be some logical. Um, idea behind why we were getting this game and what they had to do with the story and their importance. Well, I would love to see like the origin story of the Majora's Mask, you know, like the tribe Ooh. where it came from and stuff like that. That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would need like Link or anyone, you know. <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting to see like gameplay for mm. that too. Maybe it's like kind of like a Fire Emblem-esque Ooh. game like very or something ancient. like that. Yeah, yeah. that would be cool. 
Mm. So I think that's about all we have today. Uh, thank you for joining us again, Rosen. I'm always happy to have you yeah, on the show. Yeah, I love being here. Thank you so much. <laughs> so where can they find you if they want to look for um, you? They can find me on Facebook. Um, it's facebook.com slash rosen.us. Or they can find me on my website, which is uh, www.rosen.audio. Um, yeah, that's where okay. that's I think like the best option. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Zelda Informer whenever I decide to get around to writing editorials again. Uh, this takes up a majority <laughs> of my time. Oh, I bet. But yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. Thank you guys for joining us, and <laughs> thank again, you. thank you, Rosen, for for being no here. My pleasure. All right, see you guys next week. All right.